Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. This afternoon we have the uh, fun task of, uh, of uh, cannula feeding the little baby uh, Egyptian saw scale vipers that hatched out uh, oh, about 10 days ago. Um, I noted in the cage that only one of the babies had its initial shed, which is sort of surprising. Um, last night I offered them frozen thawed geckos, but uh, none of the three uh, ate them. Uh, they were a little bit on the large size because these are really small babies. Um, uh, even though they're really small babies, they're certainly capable of putting me in the hospital and perhaps requiring antivenin. So, uh, Lori and I have a, uh, a technique worked out for feeding little baby venomous snakes. Um, you probably, if you're you know, part of the channel and have watched my videos for the longest time, you've probably seen us do this with other baby snakes. Uh, um, Fortunately, the group of baby Trimosaurus that were uh, born in June, um, those took geckos right away, and one of them actually took uh, a, a frozen thawed pink right away, and right now two out of the three babies uh, that were born are eating uh, frozen thawed uh, fuzzies, uh, only one holdout eating uh, geckos. Now, geckos are very expensive. They cost well over $2, so I hate wasting them. And plus, I hate, you know, it's a gecko that gave up its life for to feed these snakes. So, um, uh, I don't like to waste them. So, we're going to cannula feed these little uh, pyramidums a little while for probably a month, uh, once a week. Uh, until they get some, some growth on them, some size, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll try to transition them to something else. So first of all, uh, we'll get the little blighter on the table. Hopefully it doesn't take off like a little rocket, or she doesn't take off like a little rocket. Now these are quite small and quite uh, quick when they want to be. Ooh, death rolling like crazy. Holy crap. A little tiger by the tail and by the head. Okay, so we'll see if we can get this focused. Oh, don't. Don't tilt your head around like that. That's not very nice. Um, yep, ready to bite. I'm sorry if this is not in focus. I'm mostly focused myself on that little fang that's trying to stick me in the finger. Oh, death roll. All right, maybe this will straighten you out a little bit. Oh, no. Um, let's get this back end under control. Oh, he's strong considering the size. Yeah, he's really, really strong. So we're going to put this down. Him twisting like that doesn't help to the seven centimeter mark. Go ahead and push uh, about one ml in. Go ahead. Good stop. Okay. I'm going to pull the catheter and I am going to get my fingers off of that snake. And we're going to drop it back into its bin. Hopefully it doesn't regurge, but that was a particularly difficult little snake to uh, force feed. Mm. Um, 
you know, uh, usually, you know, the Trimosaurus, because they've got a much broader head, uh, the, the front of the head is easier to control because you can just nestle your fingers behind those, the back jaw bones, and control the pointing of the front end. But Echis has a very narrow head, as you saw, and it's very difficult to control that uh, pointy end of that snake and where exactly those fangs are going. And I was really worried about that particular one. This one, hopefully, is a little bit easier going. And then we have the uh, runt of the litter, which should be a real trick. Um, hard to tell sex, but if I could guess, or I wanted to guess, I would say this is probably a male. At least these aren't like the Trimosaurus and take off like little frickin' rockets. Oh, you pooped on me, so you got some poop in you anyway, huh? Oh my, all right, let's try this uh, focus uh, up close one more time. Come on, camera. You know, folks, I really can't tell if this is in focus, but I'm not going to play with it any longer. I just want to get this over with. Okay, the less you struggle, the easier this is. Okay, 1ml. There you go, good. And this one, since it's not struggling so much, I'll, I'll squeegee uh, the contents down into its lower gut and then drop it in the bin. The other one was hell on wheels, so I wasn't, uh, wasn't going to hold on to that any longer than I had to. So while Lori resets and gets ready for the next one, uh, we'll get the other <laughs> little weenie out there. This is the runt of the litter, and I bet this one's going to be a runner. Um, we'll try to get one ml of food into it because it really, really needs it. Uh, yes, now you're really irritated because you're saw scaling and you're not hooking. I know I'm annoying you. Don't slam it just yet. <clears throat> For a slide sorry a, a size uh, measurement <laughs> um, the bottom there is in centimeters uh, the head is five millimeters wide and probably one probably eight centimeters long um, hi there hi there it's making its best effort to saw scale, but it really doesn't look like it's totally with with it. Okay. Of course it's turning to face you, so yeah. let's see if we can get him to face this. Come on, turn around. <clears throat> and of course he's not going to. Yes, I know. Come on, don't waste your energy. Don't waste your energy. Come on, just go with this. I'm just yeah okay wow that's a lot of venom I don't know if you can see that there's two new nice drops of venom okay he's facing away right now so he's in perfect position well, you can was. sort of see the wetness on there those are two drops of venom that's probably enough to force me to go to the hospital to get anti-venom Too close. He's really not uh, moving very well, which concerns me. He's moving well enough to death roll and to uh, be difficult. Soul scales with their defense keeping the head in the center is, uh, is tricky. really tricky to work with. Come on. No, you're biting yourself. Oh 
Oh my. You are just a tiny little terror. Okay, so we can't go to seven centimeters with this guy. Let's make sure that we have it in the right place. We're not going into its trachea, although I think that's probably... Okay, try one mil. Maybe a big meal for it, but it needs a big meal. Good, stop. Okay. Wow. All right, that's done. And we only have probably four to six more times to do that. Uh, and Enjoy. they get stronger and bigger every single time. So that's all for, the, for now. We gotta clean up and move on to taking care of a few other critters that are uh, easier to deal with. All right, the cantiles haven't uh, cooperated and eaten in a while, so I figured I would try it. Yep, it's struck. That's no guarantee that it will eat. Uh, these are Gloyd's cantiles, one of the few subspecies of the Mexican cantile. The Kistradon is the genus, just like our native copperhead and cottonmouth. But these pack uh, quite a bit more punch um, these can actually probably kill you uh, quite readily. They cause quite a coagulopathy, um, whereas copperheads just mostly cause pain and swelling and some local tissue destruction. These guys uh, are bad news. Uh, so these are a little flighty, like most of Kistradon, so we'll just shut that and move on to the other one. These guys don't like company when they're eating either, so it's probably best if we move on. Hello. I'm not going to open this side. That's asking for trouble. Yeah. Sorry, you have a double glass, but we prefer to be a little bit safer than, uh, than having a snake come out in your face. Oh, yes, that would not be well. Here we go with our usual battle with substrate straight in the channel. Okay, so we'll just let these guys eat. Uh, they are very pretty. They are very pretty, but they're quite cracky. Yes, indeed. Like you know, all kissed 